Last year, I told the story of the beginning of Cucullin and how he got his name. While there are many tales of his many battles and legends that happened after that, I am instead this year going to tell his final story, the story of his death. The death of this ancient Irish demigod was brought about by the scheming of the then Queen of the Irish province of Connacht, Queen Maeve. Previously, Queen Maeve and Cúchulainn had crossed paths in a battle that would become known as the Cattle Raid of Cooley, or also known as the War of the Brown Bull. On that occasion, Cúchulainn had deeply wounded the Queen's pride, and she seek revenge. Queen Maeve had held meetings with the families of those slain by Cúchulainn, seeking their aid so that they too might gain revenge for the loss of their loved ones at the hands of the Champion of Ulster. Amongst them were Lugard Mac Henry, whose father, the King of Munster, was slain by Cúchulainn, and also the three daughters of Maeve's own former druid, Calatan, who was killed by Cúchulainn at the Cattle Raid of Cooley. Maeve had sent these three daughters of Calatan to Scotland and Babylon to study the magical arts to help aid her in ending the life of the Hound of Ulster. When they were ready, Maeve then waited for the right time to attack Cúchulainn for a time when she knew he would be forced to fight alone. And thanks to a curse placed on the men of Ulster by the goddess Maka, she knew when this opportune moment would come. The curse of Maka had been placed on men of Ulster after an event where an old Ulster king had forced a pregnant goddess Maka to race with his horses after her mortal husband had boasted that she could outrun the king's steeds. Despite being pregnant, the goddess Maka won the race, but in revenge placed a curse on the men of Ulster that whenever they were needed most, they would suffer her pains of labour and be unable to fight. Cúchulainn, however, was not affected by this curse, as he was born half mortal, half god. It was this curse that also saw Cúchulainn fight against Maeve's forces alone in their first and previous encounter at the Cattle Raid of Cooley and it would see him fight alone again, one final time. As the forces of Queen Maeve once again marched on Ulster, King Kionkobar called on his war council, but his warriors and druids became too incapacitated to fight from the curse. However, the king did not want Cúchulainn to fight alone this time, for it was known that if this champion were to fall, Ulster would become luckless forever. He sent Cúchulainn to the Valley of the Deaf, where no sound of the outside world could be heard, and sent with him a number of druids and women to keep him occupied, so that he would not find out about Maeve's advancing forces. The daughters of Calatan then used their magic to create an illusion of a vast army surrounding the valley, with fires burning and women shrieking. This illusion was so powerful but the noise of it was able to reach inside the Valley of the Death, and although the druids and women attending Cúchulainn tried their best to drown it out, Cúchulainn still heard it, and wanted to rush out into the battle. Eventually, a druid did manage to calm him down and convince him that it was all an illusion, and that he need not venture out of the valley. It was then that one of Calatan's daughters took on the form of a previous lover of Cúchulainn, and cried and begged with him, saying that Ulster was being ravaged while he was enjoying himself with women and food, while all about him was being burned and destroyed. Cúchulainn then jumped into action, and neither the women nor the druids could restrain him this time, as he ordered his chariot be harnessed, and he rode out to find the invading army. Still, there were many omens warning Cúchulainn not to fight this battle which he did not heed. His horse, Liamaka refused to be bridled and wept tears of blood. Three times his mother brought him wine, and each time the wine turned to blood in his mouth. And later, while crossing a river, he saw a woman of the scythe, or a banshee, washing armour in the water. She turned to him and said, I am washing the armour of Cúchulainn, who rides to his death this day. Despite all this, he continued his ride towards the battle with Maeve, and on his way he encountered three old ladies roasting dog meat by a roadside fire. 
and they offered Cú Chulainn some of their food. This placed Cú Chulainn in a bit of a bind, for he had a gisha, a personal taboo or curse, on him that forbid him from eating the meat of a dog, as it was his totem animal. For any other warrior this would have been no problem, but Cú Chulainn had a second gisha on him which forbid him from refusing hospitality. He was now forced to break one of his taboos, and chose to eat the meat that was offered. But as he did so, the hand that held it became weakened and was now of little use to him. As he approached the battlefield, it was known that Cúchulainn carried in his chariot three spears, and legend had foretold that each of those spears would kill a king. Because of this, his enemies wanted these spears in their own possession, so that they might benefit from this legend. Three druids of Nave's army were sent to ask for the three spears, as it was considered highly unlucky and dishonorable to refuse a request from a druid. The three druids approached Cúchulainn and demanded his spears. Not wanting to cause himself or his clan any dishonor, he agreed to give them the spears, but they did not say by which means he should hand them over, and Cúchulainn flung the spears at each of the druids, striking and killing them all. However, with the spears now out of Cúchulainn's chariot and on the battlefield, Lugud took them up and flung all three back at Cúchulainn. The first hit and killed his faithful charioteer and good friend Leig. The second struck down Cúchulainn's horse, Liamaka, and the third hit and fatally wounded Cúchulainn himself. Thus, the prophecy of the spears was fulfilled, for Leig was the king of the charioteers, Liamaka the king of the horses, and Cúchulainn the king of the champions. Realizing his time had now come, Cúchulainn found a large standing stone in the field and with his last ounce of strength bound himself to it so that he might die standing up like a warrior, facing his enemies, and not fall to the ground when he lost the power of his legs. His hero's light faded from him, and his face became white as snow, yet the enemy soldiers still did not approach him. Unaware he had bound himself to the stone to remain upright, believing he might have survived the wound inflicted by the spear. Such was his reputation. They were fearful to approach. It was not until a black crow, a symbol of the Morrigan goddess of death, landed on his shoulder, did they then know there was no life left in the champion known as the Hound of Ulster. Lugrid would then approach Cúchulainn's corpse to remove his head and take it as a trophy. But as he does so, Cúchulainn's sword falls from his lifeless hand, and in turn cuts off the hand Lugrid used to remove Cúchulainn's head. It is also said that another knight of Lulster, a friend of Cúchulainn named Cunnel Kjarnok, had made a pact with Cúchulainn, that whichever of them would die first, the other would seek revenge. Cunnel, on hearing the death of Cúchulainn, pursued Lugrid and found him and challenged him to a fight. Because his enemy had lost his hand to Cúchulainn's lifeless body, Cunnel offered to fight with one hand tucked inside his belt so that it would be a fair fight. Still, Cunnel Kjarnok won the battle and avenged the fallen Cúchulainn. This standing stone in a field outside the town of Knockbridge in County Loud is believed to be the very stone Cúchulainn used to bound himself to, to remain upright as he died facing his enemies. Locally, the stone is known as Cluck of Fjarmor, meaning Stone of the Big Man, and the field in which it stands is known as the Field of Slaughter.